Ayahuasca has changed my life. I've sat with this medicine for the past two years in ceremony, multiple times, more times now than I can count, I would say. And I'm not in ceremony just to sit as a participant, but I really have been there as a volunteer, helping within the space, helping others that are coming to heal, and really just holding space and assisting in whatever is needed. Out of all the medicines that I have had the pleasure of sitting with and working with, I would say that ayahuasca has been the hardest to work with, yet for me, it's been the the medicine that I've connected with on the deepest levels. And it has a special place in my heart. This plant consciousness is all-knowing. It is a mother spirit. And I guess as a mother knows everything, I would say that this plant really functions in the same way. Whenever you come into the ceremony space, she knows if you are afraid. She knows if you are anxious. She knows if you're coming in and feeling like, oh, it's going to be a piece of cake. If your ego is on the forefront, she knows. So I always say that it is very important to approach these medicines with respect, with humility, and an open heart. A lot of us go into these spaces with expectations and intentions, but for me, at least, I can only speak from my experience, I've learned that the best intention for me has always been to receive whatever it is the medicine wants me to receive and just go in with an open heart and an open mind. Because ultimately, the medicine gives us what we need and not really what we want. And sometimes people go in with a lot of expectations and that can bring about a lot of disappointment at times if it is not the experience that you were expecting. But even if you have expectations and you have intentions, every ceremony is different. So it really doesn't matter um, what you think you're supposed to get out of it because in the end, you always come out with the realization that you got exactly what you needed. As many times that I've sat with the medicine, I will still say that every ceremony and every experience is different. Every single time. Every single time I'm touching a different part of me that needs healing. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it gets easier. But you do get to a point of understanding the, the importance of surrender and ultimately knowing that, you know, I'm here to learn and that I don't know anything. So I really go into that space with that mindset of, you know what, mother, teach me, show me, guide me. Because I do not, I, I cannot pretend to know anything because I am very much, I've been in those situations where I have gone thinking that, oh, I want this. I know, I know that this is what I'm supposed to receive. And I was shown very quickly that I really know nothing at all. The earth is ancient. It has been here before any, any human has walked on it. And she's told me this, that the earth holds so much wisdom and knowledge. It's been here before anyone else. So to think that a human knows better than the earth is actually kind of funny. I've had experiences where I've gone through an ego, ego death and I've completely 
dissolved into pure consciousness to the point where I didn't even know my name. I didn't even know that I had children. The sound of my name sounded so funny. I was like, that is Priscilla's my name? And I was going through this loop. I got stuck in this loop of life and death and constant death and rebirth and death and rebirth. And it's every time I would go through this process of dissolving and feeling like what you know death felt felt like to me and then coming into this place of rebirth i would purge it felt like i was in this loop for hours there's really no concept of time within within the ceremony space but from the time that i went into that from the time that ceremony was over i would say that it felt like a good like four hours but again it could have been maybe just one hour of that but it felt like an eternity it felt never ending and that death experience that one in particular really changed my life completely because whenever i got out of that i had so much appreciation for this life just to be in this reality felt like a blessing and I understood so much. So I am eternally grateful to this medicine. And I always say that I am indebted to the earth. And this is why I continue to show up every single time in these spaces, in the ceremony space, to really volunteer, to give my time, to give back. And I will continue to do so until the medicine no longer calls me and I don't know if that is something that'll ever happen because of how strongly I feel within my heart and how grateful I am but that's the thing with this medicine you don't decide that you want to drink ayahuasca this medicine calls you and she makes herself known to you and you will know whenever it is time so i will say that it is not for everyone to just go and sit in ceremony and drink for the hell of it because it's not something you do recreational it's not something you do for fun it is the complete undoing and rebuilding of everything that you've ever known but something that people don't really talk about is the the dark period that can come after drinking this medicine because I went into a place of, of feeling lost, of feeling like I was spiraling into a depression, of really not knowing where I stood in my life. But that is what happens. It is the undoing of everything that you've known. So there, there are sometimes, not for everyone, but sometimes people go into this place of uncertainty and not knowing anything about themselves because you have lost the old identity and you are not fully in your new identity so you're in this gray area and this is the time for integration talking to an integration guy talking to the community plant medicine community talking to other people that have had this experience and also really journaling, reflecting, spending time in nature is so crucial. Grounding, remembering that you are here, remembering where you come from. These experiences are nothing without integration. Integration is like 80% of the whole experience, of the whole healing experience, of the whole ceremony experience. And and sometimes we wanna tell our loved ones or we want to tell our partners, we want to tell our friends. But if you are sharing these kinds of experiences with people that are not having them, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy because these are the experiences that you need to have in order to have that understanding. If you do not do this, you will not understand. So sometimes it's better really not to share the experience with people that have not had it because it's going to be kind of hard to understand unless you know that person is a, a person who's open-minded, is a person that loves you and cares about you and is fully going to support you. But it is very important for you to stay 
connected to community, connected to people that are within this the space, so you can realize that you that everything that you are feeling is absolutely normal and that you are not alone. Because trust me, everyone that has had these experiences, there is nothing out of this world that you can tell me because I understand it. Like I've had so many experiences that, okay, yeah, what you're feeling, I've been there too. I've felt that. I know what you mean. Yeah, I get you. So really remembering how you felt in ceremony and applying that to your day-to-day life because the medicine shows you that you always have a choice you can choose to go this way or you can choose to go that way it is truly very very simple and we tend to complicate things because of how simple things really are So if you are feeling lost after ceremony, know that you are not alone. This is absolutely normal. I've been there. I had, after that experience of like really dissolving, which some, which actually felt a little traumatizing at the time, I would say that I took maybe five months of really integrating and really like going deep and like, meditating, journaling, really appreciating everything around me, being more in nature, being with my family, connecting to my roots, connecting to to where I come from. And ultimately, I felt called to come back. I was pulled to come back because I I didn't want to fear the medicine. And and really that experience was like my second time in ceremony so I would say that was about two years ago but nonetheless it changed my life so that period of integration is so important because there's going to be things that come to us that maybe didn't come in ceremony things that we will realize we'll have uh, you know synchronicities and realizations and really taking the time to allow the medicine to work because even though you're no longer in ceremony, the medicine is still in you. The medicine is still working through you and a lot of things are going to be coming to you in your dreams, coming to you in your life. And and that is how you start to make sense of the ceremony, of the things that came to you while you were in ceremony. Because sometimes people have these great experiences and you feel like you are on top of the world and then you come back to your regular life and people want to hold on to that feeling of, you know, oh, I feel like I'm losing my spark. I feel like I'm losing the medicine. You're never losing the medicine. The medicine is always in you. It is about remembering And knowing that you are very capable of feeling in that exact way without anything because that is already inside of you. It is already within you. It is who you are. So it is about applying what you've learned and taking your time to sit with it. And something that is said in ceremony as well as not to make any decisions within the 30 days of drinking medicine because you are feeling like everything is amazing and great. And a lot of people feel like, oh, okay, you know, I want to go travel the world. I'm, I'm ready to do this and that. And you feel like you are just ready to like conquer everything. And a lot of people make decisions that they later, later regret. So something that is said within the ceremony space is, hey, take some time to really sit with with what is coming up for you. Don't make any major decisions within the first 30 days because it might change. You might change emotions come and emotions go and we have ups and then we have downs. So it's very important to take enough time before you make any major decisions in your life. I feel like for me, the reason that I've connected the deepest with this medicine is because it has been the hardest to work with. And I've learned so much about myself within the past few years. And I have so much appreciation for, for this, for the earth, you know, for Pachamama, Madre Tierra, the earth. 
you know, where we come from, where we're going. And it is through the earth that I am able to deeply connect with, with my parents who have both passed. So for me, it has also been about healing the relationships that I have with, with my parents after life, you know, because they're no longer here physically. However, this is, I feel extremely supported by them. So you are always supported and you're not alone. If you feel that way, you know, you can always leave me a comment. I have my email in, in the little section there. You can reach out to me. We can chat. So I really just wanted to make this video as a way to show my support and know that you're not alone within this journey and there are so many people that are going through the same thing. So I hope that this video resonates and reaches those that are needing to hear this message. So thank you guys for listening. I love you and I will see you in another video.